Well, g'day, Glav here. Welcome back and thanks for checking back in. If you're looking for a ride video today, you'll be disappointed. This video is about me having a rant about and discussion around Harley Davidson and their current performance. So if you're looking for a ride, turn off now. Sorry about that. Wait for the next one. Just by way of background, um, a little bit about me, a lot of my friends know this. I was the managing director of a large premium brand automotive product for Australia, New Zealand and parts of Asia. And I must say, me and the team did pretty well. We built that from a few percent market share up to number two in the market. Why am I telling you this crap? I actually know what I'm talking about in the automotive field in this country. So therefore qualified to make some of the comments that I make. Having said that, I want to talk to you today about Harley Davidson, about their treatment of the million dollar bogan, but more to the point, I can actually speak directly to the treatment of myself. My own Harley Davidson story uh, is that I've had Harleys for about 25 years. I've had five or six of them, plus Amer other American V twins as well. Um, so I've had a lot of interaction with Harley both here in Australia and also in my other home in Asia. So let's go over a bit of the history. For the first 15 to 20 years of owning Harley Davidsons, just loved them. Became that typical Harley diehard guy where you could never say anything bad about Harley Davidson. I was one of those guys. Like the old saying, used to be, if I have to explain it to you, you'll never understand. So I was a hardcore Harley guy. However, in the last five years, I think things have started to change and not for the better either. Let me relay to you some of my own direct personal experiences of what's happened to me. A few years ago, I was riding my SG, Street Glide, in uh, my home in Thailand and I got taken out by a Thai guy. Long story short, they had to do considerable repairs, the Harley dealers, considerable repairs to that bike to get it back on the road. The biggest issue wasn't the dealer, it was the part side of the business. Could you believe it took Harley three and a half months to secure all the parts to repair my bike. Now Harley have a PDC, which is a parts distribution center in Asia, which services all of Asia, including Australia, New Zealand, and all of Asia. They didn't have all the parts. So they had to order the parts on the parts distribution center out of Harley in the US. Well, guess friggin' what? Would you believe my Street Glide had a standard gloss black fuel tank on it and it took Harley through over three months to source that part. They didn't have one at the dealership, they didn't have one in Thailand anywhere, they didn't have one at the Singapore PDC, they didn't have one in America, they had to wait for their producer, their subcontractor to build one of those tanks to get my bike back on the road. Now. On a premium product, let me tell you, aftermarket support is one of the most critical items when you're charging a premium price for your product and your parts. Yet in Harley Davidson's case, an absolute failure. Here is a business that's been in business for probably close to 100 years, and yet they can't even get the basics right. That was truly shameful. Given the age of that bike, I decided to upgrade to a Heritage. So sitting up there now, I have a brand new Heritage. And that becomes p a bit pertinent later along in this conversation. The next personal experience I'll share with you is in Australia here, I had a CVO Limited. That is Harley's most expensive premium motorcycle that they sell. Unfortunately, after about 40,000 Ks, that motorcycle started to develop a frame oscillation, which became quite dangerous. I'm trying to, trying to cut a long story short here, but I reported this to the dealer and got the dealer to record this within the two-year warranty period, because I knew it was just going to slowly get worse and worse. 
dealer reported it to Harley Australia who got them to carry out a handful of tests on the bike. Typical shit like test the head stem bearings, test the wheel bearings, test the wheel alignment, look at the tyres, blah blah blah. And none of these of course came up with any issue. I continued to complain, even as the bike drifted outside of warranty, about the handling of this bike because in my opinion it had become quite dangerous. The issue was they said, the dealer said, and the dealer's been great through this, and that is absolutely pertinent when we talk about the million dollar bargain shortly. The dealer's been fantastic in this, but the dealer has said they weren't initially able to get their mechanic to replicate it. Long story short, in the end they got their mechanic to replicate the issue. On discussions with Harley Davison, Harley Davison, would you believe, come back and did an under the breath recommendation that I fit a true track system out of the US to this bike. And I said, you know what, I don't care. I've heard very, very good things about true track improving the handling and fixing these handling issues. Therefore, happy to fit that to fix Harley's problem. But guess what, Harley? You're paying for it. Oh, oh, no, sorry, we can't pay for it. It's not a genuine Harley part. And I said, well, I don't give a flying. Your issue, you fix it. Again, I got sick and tired of having the arguments with them. The dealer was great, Toowoomba was great, and said, Paul, we'll fix, we'll fit the part for you, but you have to source it. Therefore, after several weeks of anxiety, I fitted the part myself. Um, I didn't take the dealer up in the office. So 500 bucks later, my bike is fixed. It's handling far better than it ever handled, and the oscillation problem has gone away. However, what an absolute disgrace on Harley's part. It was their issue, it was under warranty, and they needed to fix it. It was a safety issue. And they didn't step up to the plate and honour their own warranty obligations. Pure disgrace. Absolute disgrace. So, having said that, I could rave on about several more recent issues but it goes to the professionalism and the culture of that business. Let's now talk about Million Dollar Bogan. Just before we get to Million Dollar Bogan, there's something that is obvious to many and not so obvious to others. Harley Davidson is a publicly listed company in the US. This places certain pressure on the performance of Harley Davidson. Being a public company, the shareholders are looking for profit and return on their funds. Therefore, there is an inordinate amount of pressure in public companies for companies to keep producing large profits. And not only keep producing large profits, shareholders are expecting compound growth year on year on year, i.e. the profits to get larger and larger and larger. Unfortunately, that drives certain behaviours within companies. What it does is it makes management put profit above all else. That's a serious issue for Harley Davidson because unfortunately they should be looking after their core customers while they go out and try and find this new demographic, this new customer base that they need to secure for the future. Because us old blokes are eventually going to die. Their customer base is actually physically dying. But, having said that, while they go searching for this new millennial demographic, they need to, a good management team will ensure they keep their existing customer base. And they make sure the only way to keep them is to look after them. The way not to keep them is the way Harley's behaving, and that is, let's screw the customer that supported us for so many years because we have to extort profit from them. Now, let's talk about Million Dollar Bogan. No matter what you think about Daniel Hayes and his YouTube channel Million Dollar Bogan, you have to admire the bloke. He has built a YouTube channel from nothing to 70,000 plus subscribers purely through passion for the product. Watching his stuff, frankly, often makes me cringe as a Harley rider and that often embarrasses me as well. But there's, and there's been many a time where I've just yelled at the bloody TV screen, you wanker. But at the end of the day, I continue to watch him, 
I continue to support him and I continue to be entertained by him. Million Dollar Morgan appears to me to be a die-hard Harley guy, just like I am, or used to be. Um, what he does with his stuff is more, with his bikes, is more than I'll ever do to my bikes. Sometimes I say that's through respect to my bikes, but other times I would just wouldn't have the balls to do what he did. I accept that at the moment we've really only got one side of the story when it comes to Million Dollar Bogan. Not a lot has actually been said. But having said all that, when you piece all everything together, there's no doubt in my mind as what's gone down here. It's clear that Harley Davidson, whether that was through the US to Harley Davidson Australia, has put significant pressure on that dealer to pull their head in, and therefore you got the reaction from Daniel Hayes in what he did. We all know what Harley Davidson used to be about. It used to be about <clears throat> freedom, freedom of speech, doing what you wanted to do, not giving a shit about what other people thought. Exactly, exactly. But I've got to tell you, I am seriously over this woke and politically correct bullshit that's sweeping the world at the moment. And for Harley Davidson to do what they've done here, is diametrically opposed to what they used to stand for. But I guess that's why that company is changing, whether you like it or not. What we saw between Daniel Hayes, Million Dollar Bogan, and Geelong Harley Davidson and his owner Cole was a typical Harley guy, Harley dealer relationship. Very sound, very fair, of like mind, etc., etc. And what we saw from Harley Davidson, supposing all the facts are correct, was pressure that was really going to break or help to break down that relationship. And that's just not healthy when you've got a customer base such as the Million Dollar Bogan and a customer base such as myself. It astounds me that Harley would go out and spend millions of dollars in advertising on blokes like Jason Momoa, Aquaman, but I guess they're trying to attract that younger demographic. But frankly, it's just a shame that that younger demographic hasn't got the fucking money to buy their premium product, have they? So instead of supporting blokes like Million Dollar Bogan and the hundreds of other very successful, passionate YouTubes that support their product, no, they do this nonsense advertising that really just doesn't quite hit the mark. This is just another area where HD management has lost the plot. Now, there is no doubt that Daniel Hayes is an extremely shrewd businessman. You don't get to the success he has had without being so. But the latest events that has caused him to react and shut down his YouTube channel has had reactions all over the world. I've ginned around for a month thinking about posting a comment on this and it's taken me a month to do it. But in the meantime, there's literally been dozens and dozens of other YouTubers that have got online and spoken about this. Most of them in support of Daniel and his channel and a few in the opposite. What I can say is you're a very smart man, Daniel, because I've noted that whilst this outrage is going on around the world about how Harley has treated you, I think I haven't got the exact numbers, obviously, but I think your subscriber base went up by about 10,000 subscribers. Very, very smart. Anyway, from my point of view, I think that Harley has not done the right thing in terms of NDB, but I know Daniel Hayes won't be able to help himself. He's that type of bloke, and he'll be back sooner than what we expect. So let's look at the next issue, which is their dealer network. Harley have recently swapped across, in this country anyway, to a number of corporate dealers, dealers owned by large corporate companies rather than individuals. This, in my opinion, is a very bad mistake. I'll tell you why. My bike, a CVO Ultra, three years old. I got the numbers on this bike. They wanted to trade it, a $60,000 motorcycle, for $25,000. They wanted to retail it then for $35,000. So this dealer wanted to make a very quick $10,000 profit. The normal profit on used motorbikes is a couple of thousand dollars. 
So once again, you've got a devaluation of the product. I can tell you, when I was the MD, and if I had a dealer of ours do this, we would have stormed into that dealer's office and said, you will cease and desist, otherwise you won't be a dealer. They only would have got one chance to rectify their behaviour. You cannot take a premium product and devalue its resale value. Premium product must maintain a premium resale value. Harley clearly used to have that, but it's no longer the case. They just don't hold their value anymore. I have mates in the very same position as I am. A good mate of mine that I've ridden with all over the world is a five Harley family, and yet he's been treated so poorly, he says that he will never purchase a new Harley for himself. He will continue to rebuild his existing bike with aftermarket parts, not Harley parts, aftermarket parts. So he will still have a Harley, but Harley will be getting no more profit from him. This is very typical of what the issue Harley faces in. But once again, it comes down to customer service. Well, what did I do? Well, I voted with my friggin' wallet. HD did get the opportunity to quote, uh, but at the end of the day, they were thousands of dollars dearer and thousands of dollars short in features. But you know what? Being the Harley guy that I once was, that wouldn't have mattered. All Harley had to do was step up to the plate and fix my bike under warranty like they should have in the first place. I would have paid the premium to maintain the Harley. Frankly, Harley executives need, need to go back to fucking business school. Rule 101, it costs 10 times the amount of money to attract a new customer than it does to maintain an old customer. As I said, I would have paid a premium to keep my bike as a Harley. I would have ignored the price difference, ignored the feature difference, just so I remained a Harley person. But no, for the sake of $500, Harley decided not to honour their obligation, therefore they lost thousands of dollars in margin on the sale of a new bike, let alone all the parts and service that I would have consumed in the future. Really disgraceful stuff. To see what bike I actually purchased, I'd uh, encourage you to uh, log on to the next video. Now, I actually hope Harley survives. I am still a Harley owner, remembering I have a bike up in Asia, brand new Heritage 114 in Asia. So it's within my interest for Harley to survive. Yes, they have absolutely lost the plot at the moment, and I hope this new German CEO is able to turn that business around. But I've got to tell you, they've got to turn, the first thing he's got to do is turn the culture of that business around. And from what I've seen to date, I ain't seeing anything of that happen. But hey, my fingers are still crossed. So that's the end of my rant and rave. It'll probably be the only one you'll ever see from me on a video like this, but hey, we'll see what happens in the future. Please remember people, life, as I always say, can be ever so short. Therefore, live life today.